All right, so this is the last of my lecture for the week. Um, there will be a lot of YouTube videos and um, other videos I want you to watch um, covering these topics. And, but this one is the last one from me and it's kind of short and sweet because a lot of what we talked about in the last lecture covered economics too. But this is getting a little bit more into the approximate returns on investments. We talked about the startup fund. We talked about cost of production. Now what happens when you're able to sell your product? You know, what are you getting back from that? So I got a few examples. Um, some of them are published numbers from actual grow operations. Some of them are, I don't know if I wanna say estimates or complete guesses on my part. But I'll talk, I'll tell you, you know, what's what when we get there. So, and you're going to see variable costs and fixed costs again. And then change how changes of products affect profit, which we'll talk about that, but it's like quality, um, potency, the percent of CBD or THC, that sort of thing. So I'll just start off with the common ideas and um you know, don't forget to remember these at the end of it too. But I said, you know, there is a pretty good outlook for getting into these industries. Um, you know, especially marijuana, make a good chunk of money, but it is definitely an expensive industry to get into, especially if you're starting with nothing. So it's always, it's just going to help you in the long run if you can make partnerships um, with other people that do maybe have funding money that they can start with um, so that you're not relying completely on loans because especially if you're just focusing on marijuana there's not going to be a lot of bank loans available to you because it's federally illegal um, but hemp pretty much good to go uh, just it's just that expensive equipment and co-ops are like farmers getting together and sharing things. You might have to like pay a rent or something like that, but paying a couple hundred dollars to borrow a combine, in my opinion, is a lot better than having to go out and buy a combine yourself. So, and just like how costs of production changed based on size and what you were growing, profit is going to change too. So that's a big point. But first, we're going to start off with CBD hemp examples. So these are all things that have been published. Um, most of my examples that I have, this first one is from the University of Connecticut, UConn. Um, I know that there's a lot of words written down there. So some of it, this was like taking numbers that farmers gave them as far as like what it costs to actually produce. So they mostly looked at per acre or per pound of dried flour. And I kind of summarized it there in the table of what it was per acre. So they mostly saw that the total cost per acre, so this is combining the variable cost and the fixed cost together, um, is about $20,000. Um, they did make a note that about two thirds of the total cost was variable. So about $12,000 of that was variable, meaning it changes with the level of production. The other one third of that was fixed. So $6,500 was fixed. Now, <clears throat> I'll talk about this equation with you, but the, the price of CBD has dropped a lot. And this was 2020. Um, it, the price really still is about $1.50 um, per CBD percent. And when I started in this growing CBD in 2019, it was actually up to like four or five dollars per CBD point. So you made a lot more money back in the beginning, but it dropped. It's probably what we're going to see with marijuana as well. Um, but the prevailing local price of $1.50 and six and a half percent CBD, that means total revenues were about $24,000 per acre. So that is a simple equation to get your profit. Hang on, let me get my pen. All right, so to get this profit number, you literally take your revenue, revenue 
and minus cost equals profit. All right, so 24,000 minus 19, blah, 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 is 5,000. So you're making about $5,000 per acre. Honestly, not bad. Um, I'm not sure how that compares to other crops. Oof, corn, because they don't really do it by acre. They do corn like by bushel. I'm trying to think. It's probably not too far off from like tomatoes and strawberries by acre. I don't know, maybe it's slightly more. So for CBD, remember this is CBD. Yeah, making a profit, and that's definitely helpful, but I'm not sure you're getting rich that you can like retire in a couple of years off of it. Um, the other number here is if you were only going to cover variable costs. So this is taking revenue minus the cost of just the variable cost, which was that $12,000 back up here. And sometimes people do this because especially if they were a farmer, so this was a few acres of hemp and then they also had acres of um, corn, soybean and alfalfa, I don't know, apple trees. They could have those other crops cover the cost of the fixed because, again, fixed doesn't change with size or not necessarily with size, but like how much you're growing. Um, so you could, in some cases, people ignore the fixed cost because it's going to get covered by something else that they're growing. So in that particular case, if it's only covering variable costs, they made $11,000, which again, that's better. Uh, I could definitely see per acre, if you did a few acres of that, that definitely adding up to something. <clears throat> so, but I wanted to talk about how they get to that number of um, that total revenue number, because they said $1.50 and six and a half percent CBD. How do we get to 24? Yada, yada, yada. And this is Yeah, okay, I think I have the right numbers on this example. I couldn't remember if I just made something up or not. So you do make some assumptions like that one plant can oops, sorry, I did not mean to do that. That one plant gets you about a pound of flour. All right, that is going to vary based on your plant, but it's a pretty good assumption. Um, I don't have quite the right numbers. But anyways, I'll go through the example that I have here. So, that's you're gonna be your yield, one pound of flour. And in one acre, you're typically gonna get about 1,500 pounds of flour per acre, because that's about, you do about 1,500 plants per acre. So, and it's a one-to-one, -one, so that's 1,500 pounds of flour. Um, I just put that as about 200 pounds of crude oil, CBD oil there, but we don't really need to worry about this part for the equation of figuring out profit for just the flour, which was on the last one. So just think about this, one acre, 1,500 pounds of flour. That equation, that is the price per CBD point, and that's a percent sign, sorry, per single pounds. Right, that's the equation. That's what your revenue is going to be. Now, this price could change depending upon who's buying your stuff, but we'll use this example that it was a dollar fifty. 
right? The CBD percent could change based on the cultivar you're growing. But we're going to use the example that it was six and a half because that's pretty average. And then 1,500 pounds. And I'm just going to multiply this. So, sorry, let me pull up my calculator on my phone. So 1.5 times 6.5 times 1,500. So you see it's not the same as on the previous slide. And I think that is because they assumed the pounds was 250 or 2,500. That gets me closer. Yep, that's the number. So they actually figured that it's about two pounds per plant, and they went with 2,500 pounds per acre. But I definitely think that this is a lot more average as far as the reports I've looked at and what I've actually grown myself. But again, it could change. You could have some cultivars that do a huge yield, right? So any one of these numbers could change based on what you're growing and change therefore your revenue. This at 2,500 pounds gets you that 24, three, seven, five dollars. So it's an interesting equation. Um, it's something that we had to do here when we, in 2008, 2019, when we grew like five acres of hemp and had a contract to sell it, um, we had to set this equation so that it was already kind of set in stone what he would pay. I mean, and then we just had to figure out the pounds at the end when we harvested. So he actually paid $4 per CBD point. So I increased that side of the equation, but you can really increase any part of this equation. I do have some examples of that later on, but this is showing the differences in the yield. So like I calculated that 1500 yield and they did the 2500. So, <clears throat> Cost of production stays the same, all right, but your net returns over variable costs, very different. And over total costs, actually in the negative if you only had 1,500 return. And uh, that's what the parentheses means, is that it's negative, you're in the red. So it could be something you look for when you're looking for at the genetics of the plant and what you're going to grow. You know, if it's been reported that a plant yields a lot more, maybe that's what you go with because you know that means you're going to get more money back. And this is keeping the CBD percentage the same. And I'm assuming the price is the same, even though they didn't say that. All right, what if you, what if the price per CBD percent goes up, right? They're also showing different yield over here, but what if it went up to $3, 375, right? You can see how much more money you'll make even at low yield. And this is keeping CBD percent the same, but just changing in the price for that equation price per CD point per pound. What if you have different amounts of CBD percent? All right, so now they're looking at three to seven. Okay. And this is above total cost. I just took one table out of that and it's keeping it at a dollar 50 per CBD point per pound. You're only really going to be in the positive at the 7% and a yield of 2,000. 
pounds per acre, or six to seven in the 2500, or five, six, seven, or four, five, six, seven. So in this particular example, at that low of a price, you need it to be at the higher range of CBD to be in the positive. You can't really afford to grow anything that's less. And unfortunately, there are some cultivars out there that have pretty low percentages of CBD. Do not grow those, They're not worth it. Um, this one's taking a look at uh, the price and CBD percentage together. So what if price varied and CBD percentage varied? And they actually went a little bit higher and they went up to 15. So you can find cultivars like that. I had a, I had one a few years ago that was at about 15%. Look at how much money I would have made if I could sell it for $2 per CBD point. And this is at a yield of 2,500 pounds. So obviously with increasing price <laughs> and increasing CBD percent, you're gonna make a lot of money back. But unfortunately, the market is not going to go that way. Uh, it seems to be pretty steady at 150. So you can see that 5% is not going to work because it's in the negative. You need to be at 7% or higher. But the higher you can go, the better off you'll be. So. With fiber hemp, all right, again, Different examples. Um, I th let me just go back real fast. Okay, I didn't put that out there. So it probably was outdoor growing. So fiber is definitely outdoor growing. The yield is really variable, one to 5.5 tons per acre. So like that's a pretty good range. And price ranges from, sorry, that is supposed to be a seven. 70 to 135 dollars per ton. So huge variability makes it really hard to kind of show you this table, but I, I just I went at the highest amount. So I said at five and a half tons per acre, you got the really high yield and you got somebody to pay a good chunk of money, 135 dollars per ton. You're looking at um, a profit per acre of about 74 dollars. So I don't know what to say about this. I mean, obviously you're not making a ton of money, you're making $74 an acre. Um, if you only cover variable costs, you make a little bit more, $200 per acre, but this is not going to compare to really anything we grow. So, you know, how is that going to make it worth it? The answer is it doesn't really, unless there starts to become a bigger demand for it. And then it would increase, you know, the price. Then maybe it'd be worth it. $74 an acre. That's nothing. Grain hemp. Uh, again, outdoor growing. A little bit better. Five acre, or... Sorry, I think this is the example. It's on five acres. But you get a, a yield of about 800 to 1,000 pounds per acre. Um, this is some results from Purdue that found the profit would be about 574, or sorry, 547 dollars per acre. So some of the things you need to remember, you know, we're only looking at total costs. I haven't break anything down for you in total revenue. Um, oops, I guess I forgot to put this in here. But it's about, it ranges from, for grain, it ranges from about five. Sorry, that doesn't look like a five. About $5 to $6 per bushel. Grain. And it costs about $4 a pound to buy the seed to plant it. 
So same thing goes with fiber hemp. There's just honestly a lot of costs involved that unfortunately don't quite make up for it. But $500 per acre is a little bit better. So this goes back to this USDA, re USDA report that I have shown before because um, it is old, 1993 and 1994, and this is only looking at Kentucky. But I thought it could be a helpful comparison because it's looking at return per acre of fiber, grain, hemp, and then corn, wheat, tomatoes, and tobacco. So the numbers are a bit old. They probably don't even get this much anymore on the high end. Um, Oh, and that's return per acre. We want to look at net return per acre. Sorry, I went all the way to the right because it took out um, the variable fixed and labor costs. So for fiber hemp and grain hemp, you could be in the negative all the way to the positive. Um, it is slightly more than corn, wheat, and soybeans, but tomatoes definitely have more high value crop and tobacco is even higher. So, you know, is this going to convince people to grow this stuff? I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily be convinced to grow this, but, uh, and then this is just even more examples. Um, this says estimated return to land capital and management. So this is like money that as the owner decides if it's going to go back into like buying more land buying more equipment or are you just gonna pocket it? <laughs> so there's seed, fiber only, there's the dual purpose seed and fiber, certified seed, your dollars per acre. You know, it's a couple hundred, I don't know. It's, and the, oh yeah, it's still for Kentucky and it's 1997, so it's a little bit outdated. You know, it's a couple hundred. I don't know. I don't know if that's worth it. You can see that like corn and wheat is definitely low, but tobacco's high. That number might be different now though, 1997. Um, alfalfa, hay, soybeans, those are in the couple hundred too. I don't know. Definitely wouldn't convince me to turn an entire farm over to this, but maybe if you did an acre or two, made a couple hundred more. You know, I could see that. This last one is just a different uh, state, North Dakota, 98. But it's like, oh, and it has a different crop because they put um, estimates and some projects together. This is like yield, low yield hemp average and then high yield versus corn, wheat, sunflowers, barley, and potatoes. And potatoes had the highest net return. Anyways, my last few slides are on adult use cannabis or marijuana. I don't really have any examples to show because we don't really have anything from New York that would give us this. And I couldn't find a whole lot of businesses willing to provide these numbers. So um, I did my best at kind of figuring it out based on from the previous lecture, it didn't necessarily include the startup costs. So this could potentially raise this number to be $1,000 if you had to include your startup costs. But um, it was about $950 per pound. And that came from this figure here that was on the last one. I was like, I'll be on the small end of, of a facility size, say that I'm at 3,000 square feet, all right? my average cost per pound is 950. And then again, making some other assumptions, let's say one plant makes about one and a half pounds of flour. All right, I had to figure out what might be a common cost. And I did that from this article that's linked down here at the bottom. Um, I'm sorry, it's all written over that now. But this is, again, average cost uh, and it was for an ounce, so I had to figure out that there's 16 ounces in a pound, 
New York is at $337 per ounce times that by 16 and I will get um, $5,392. So I'm saying that that's my revenue. Um, I'm just thinking, sorry. Um, I, Cause I think I meant to not say per square foot, but per pound on this stuff. I originally tried to do it per square foot and that didn't work out very well. So say per pound. So you take that $5,000 minus your cost, which is that 950 and you're left with a profit of 4,442. And again, estimating that variable costs are about two thirds of that um, total cost, then if you only covered variable costs, you'd make a, almost $5,000. So out of everything we've looked at, it has a higher cost of production, but it also has a higher profit and a higher revenue. So um, I can definitely see how getting into adult use cannabis probably a little bit more lucrative than anything to do with hemp. But again, we could see that so many people flood this industry that it lowers that cost per pound. And then this would be a different story. So yeah, that is what I have for that. So I might have made you really interested into um, getting into this or I might have scared you away. I don't know. But that's the end of uh, my lectures for this week. And like I said, there'll be a bunch of other videos though that I do want you to watch. Um, so yeah, I will see you next week.